it's, it's tough with the mask. Like I really rely so much on like facial expressions and like all like the little things in between conversation. And yeah. just with mask stuff backstage, I just feel like a lot of the conversations were just like, how are you? Like, mm-hmm. was the hotel nice? Yeah. <laughs> you feel well fed. Uh-huh. You know, very broad strokes. Have you done laundry? Like- yes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Are you currently experiencing happiness or depression? <laughs> Hi, I'm Claude, and this is Friends Like These for Enemy. Hi, I'm Jack, and this is Friends Like These for Enemy. When did we meet? I don't know the answer. I know the answer. We met at that show when we did like those three shows together in like 20. 20- that was the first time we met. Yeah, I I submitted to your tour. That was interesting because um, there was no reason for us to go do shows. And obviously no one knew the pandemic was coming. This was in December of 2019. Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, calling up people I work with and being like, I got to play. Like, you just like book three shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would turn out to be like our last shows. I guess you too, right? For yeah. a year, more? Yeah, for until we played again, basically. I thought I had known you before that. Maybe I just thought I knew you because of your, because I know your music. I remember that that was the first time we had met because I was, I was stoked about opening for you guys. Do you ever feel like that where it's like you think you know someone, then you realize you don't know them. You just know their music and their face. <laughs> yeah. Or I have like internet friends and. Um, yeah. I got some of those. They're cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When you meet an internet friend, do they cease to become an internet friend and do they just become a real friend or is it like a camp friend where they're always a camp friend? And as a Jew, Claude, I expect you to understand every cultural touch point here. Yeah, (laughs) I fully understand the camp friend um, dynamic. I think it's when, I think it's how many times you're seeing the person in real life. Mm. Because like there are people who I'm friends with online and have like FaceTimed with and texted but we've never actually like met in person. You see, I believe FaceTime to be as personal as being in the same room. It's a weird wrinkle in my thinking. Well, you, you, you FaceTime a lot. That's- I've gotten a lot of blowback from it, but it's how I <laughs> choose to communicate with people. It's the only like fully modern invention from like the, the dumpster fire of things that have been coming out lately where I'm like, this one's totally cool. This like, one- you know, if like if Facebook, burned in hell that would be great but if face time remained it makes me super happy claude have we performed together we've heard i mean we we just did a tour together yeah but it's a resounding yes we performed secret yeah. life like more than 10 times yeah we did secret does that life. not count to you no 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 it totally counts okay you're treating me like an internet friend <laughs> <laughs> yeah wait it's so nice to meet you um we did Secret Life together a bunch of times. It was fun. And I did played. Did you enjoy it or was it like, okay, real talk. Sometimes like when I've opened tours and then like the person in the band asked me to play with them, I'm like, cool. But then sometimes I'm like, that's also my dinner time. No, I. So real, was there ever time where you're like, I like singing with bleachers, but like, I also got to hang. No, I, I always liked singing with you. It was fun. Okay. I loved it every time. You did. Yeah. And you, you sang you sang Lana's part, but you did it in a very different way. Yeah. I I love that song. It was my favorite, one of my favorites on the album. But yeah. I've never performed in a in a Claude set. But you're about to headline. So if there's a show that I could come to, um yeah. maybe we could do like uh some sort of like nod to like a Chicago artist that would be really cool i'd like that next question are you in your room yeah can you walk us through some of the pageantry behind you yes um well these paintings my grandma did on the side there who i met on facetime yeah yeah yes and um what else is back there just like some stuff I bought. There's a like f- a flyer to the first show I did with Josh for Toast. Um, a puppy calendar. Okay. Yeah. 
It seems like you have an interesting blend of sort of sparse and cluttered happening. Yeah. I haven't. And are there a couple of Polaroids right where you would probably sleep? Yeah. There's like, I haven't, I just moved around my room to make room for like my, all my like gear from tour, like a lot of my guitars and stuff. So I don't have the wall art, you know, the wall placement got all messed up, you know? Got it. Yeah. What motivates you? as a musician probably the same things that motivate me like in my life which is uh oh you know what actually motivates me um recently being on tour was a huge motivational shift um because it took it, it shifted the motivation from personal to sort of conversational i think before the tour i was uh in like a big conversation with myself and trying to be in that kind of competition and, and, and uh, one up myself and push myself further. And, uh, and then when the tour happened, I started to realize that there's uh, all these people I'm talking to. And, um, and that's a whole different thing. It's almost the opposite thing. So I feel at this point more motivated by like how deep that conversation can go with the audience. Cause yeah. it really feels like um, you could spend your whole life, like cutting closer and closer and closer and uh and that's i think that's always been my motivation i think it's taken me a long time to be able to articulate it um but i feel pretty clear on it now what about you claude i feel that i think it's it's been interesting seeing what people react to like what when you show people something like like a live show or a new song it, there's different parts that they'll like you can get like a noticeable reaction from that can fuck me up sometimes yeah but i think like mainly i'm just i've always been like i don't know if in inspired is the same thing but like going to live shows and like being able to like physically like see the arrangement of a song just being like hit in the face with a ton of music at once yeah. is kind of motivating and inspiring to me i guess Jack, what was the response to take the sadness out of Saturday Night Light? Um, it was, I feel like when I put things out, there's sort of uh, two things. There's the uh, response with my audience, who are the people that like listen to the records and come to the shows and are, and, and understand it. And, and the records are very connected. Like there's lyrics that are in conversation through albums. There's themes that come and go. Uh, so there's that response by like, uh, I, I call it the audience, but, but the, you know, the most connected people. And then because I also like produce records and have, uh, because, because of the context of my work is, is viewed for, through different lenses, then there's like also um, a response and awareness from people who know me from other stuff, uh, which is really cool. And, and often like in, 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 in honor, but um, remain really focused. I'm sure you like saw on the tour and like the people who were listening to the entire album and like really involved in the culture. And uh, with them, it was a really intense one. Like it, the album is really about moving on and drop dropping this layer of grief. And uh, I didn't plan it this way with the pandemic, but at least for me personally, by the time I put it out, it felt like what was going on in the world uh, had been this thing that I was poking at for a long time so I, so I i felt very overwhelmed and uh connected to my people tell me about the response to super monster it was almost like meeting people for the first time it, probably like in a way that you felt more connected to the people who were already listening to you it felt like a kind of like an introduction for me putting yeah. super monster out do you feel like that's like scary or there's like a power to it because there's no context you're just like here it is this is me i i thought i was like i felt very like empowered by it yeah this is a really interesting question because i don't it's it's also like i have such a skewed perspective on it i don't really know like how um it looks to people outside of myself i, I like try i think my self-awareness is off sometimes and i try really hard to like step outside myself and 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 look at the what does it feel like to you then like just it feels it feels really nice it feels like 
oh, it's very validating. It's like a reminder that like I have an imagination and I'm like a creative person and and parts of it surprised people and there was stuff that made things made people think about things and in, in ways that they hadn't before and it was it was really exciting. What happens when you when you try to step outside yourself and like imagine how people see it? Is that like a comfortable space or a boring one? <laughs> it's like you know when you write a new song and then you text it to somebody. And yeah. then you listen to it again after you've texted it to them, trying to think so about different. How, yeah. Yeah, how they're going to I actually hate it. it. I, I think that, like, one thing I've worked really hard at is to, in my head, like, make lists of people who are, in, by the way, people who are, like, real or dangerous when it comes to getting a reaction to your work. And that has nothing to do with how, like, like you, some of the best people in your life, uh, best friends, family, whoever it is, you could notice that, like, oh, interesting, this person, when I show them my things, I feel an inability uh, from them to be able to take it in clearly because of our relationship or because of what they do or yada, yada. And so it, it's, I've, I've um, really started to hone in on, like, who gives me valuable thoughts versus who just sort of, like, either pumps me up or gives me random weird feelings. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's so few people that you feel like see it and get it and don't just kind of, like, I go through phases. Sometimes I don't want anyone to hear shit because I'm just like, shouldn't this just be how I, I am feeling without the mirror of anyone else? Yeah. I send everything to Josh like as soon as I write it. One, so I don't lose it. So I don't forget about <laughs> it. Like, so it's in our texts. And two, because I can tell by the level. he's he He doesn't know how to be negative i can tell by how excited he is about it if it's like something to work worth finishing or something that i can just like come back to later thought what was your first ever live show like uh i played in a bowling alley i think fireside bowl what fireside bowl classic chicago bowling alley no it was like a small bowling alley in like the suburb I grew up in, that was also a bar for like the parents on like a Saturday night, you know? So like a mixer for single Jews? Kind of, yeah. yeah. And I played, but I only played acoustic guitar, so I had to like play over the sounds of like bowling lanes, like crashing and yeah, it was rough. If you do a song one day where you sample like people bowling. That would be really sick. That's a great In the idea. background and... Maybe it's not as like literal as like a song about that time, but maybe you just, yeah, that's just a cool idea. That's a really good idea. Writing what? it down in my notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were your parents there? Yeah, they were really excited. And were they like, wow, like our kids really got a future with this? Or were they like, cool? I don't, I think they were probably just like, cool. Yeah. I, I, I had a lot, I loved a lot of things. Like I really, I don't know. What could it have been besides music? Um, I was like a really like serious gymnast for a while. Did I tell you that? <laughs> you didn't tell me that, but that's interesting because I used to take gymnastic classes too. Really? <laughs> I wasn't a serious gymnast, but I think there's a Jewish element here as well. <laughs> there might be. Yeah. I was like super, I was like. You like being considered for the big show? Yeah, I was like a gymnastics kid. Like. Okay. Like I could have like moved to Florida and did like the whole. You did the floor routines? Yeah, yeah. Could you do the, the horse? That's a, like, boy gymnastics thing. Rings? That also, boy gymnastics thing. I did, like, bars and vault. Uneven bars? Yeah, that. But, uh, <laughs> was there a point in your life when your parents were like, Claude, like, you got to choose. It's like, it's gym or music. And, you know, after the bowling alley performance, we're leaning music. Yeah, no, it was not like that at all. I just like, kept getting injured from gymnastics. And then I like got to high school and I was on the gymnastics team, but only for like a year. I sort of just gravitated towards music always. What was your first show? My first show was on topic. It was at the gym of a Solomon Schechter, which was a Jewish school. Um, and at this time, well, actually, no. My first show might have been I played in a band that got to play one song at the Purim Carnival at the oh. lower school um, in the Jewish school. Uh, Only so one song? 
one song and, and we, so no matter how you slice it, my first performance was in the gymnasium of a Jewish school. <laughs> um, That's so good. And we played uh, that great song, Mother, you left me, but I never left you. Just kidding. Uh, we didn't play Mother right on. <laughs> we played, uh, dun, 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 hey, like the sports song. Oh, you did? Um, because it gets an immediate crowd reaction. Everyone's got to do the hey part. Yeah. And I've always loved uh, any sort of participation. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was the Forum Carnival. I'm not sure what I was dressed as, but I remember the bass player was dressed as Spider Man. I remember the image and just, I just remember uh, actually being completely honest. I remember loving it and just loving playing live mm -hmm. and thinking, um, yeah, it's it's uh, literally anything can happen. It's the most special thing in the world. My favorite track by Bleachers is 45, I think. Really? Yeah, it's my favorite. What's your favorite track of mine? So, I think it's so uh, I think it's so lame to pick someone's most popular track, but the reason why I want to pick Soft Spot is because so often the song that is like someone's single or something is uh, is in no way the most exciting and it often could be like sort of like just like scratching the surface. I think it's so hard to write a really catchy song that also really sounds like the artist and really like feels like it. And um, it's like how I feel about like Robin singles or things like that. Mm -hmm. And there's something about um, Soft Spot where it's like, uh, it does a thing that kind of blows my mind. I'm like, fuck, like, that's the perfect single. Like when I, and I don't know if you feel this way, but when I hear that song, I'm like, that song is Claude and sounds like Claude and has like all of the elements that I love Super Monster, but is kind of like, just like one notch above everything else in terms of how quickly it grabs you. Um, so in respect to how hard I think it is to have like the perfect uh, front door entryway to you as an artist, I 100% pick Soft Spot. What's your, what's your karaoke song? My karaoke song? You don't do, do you do karaoke? I don't not do karaoke. Are you asking me that because I have a history of being germaphobic? No, I just, I can't imagine you doing karaoke for some reason. Well, can you tell me why? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know. No, I think you know, and you're trying to pick your words. So why don't you just shoot it out there? <laughs> I, I actually, I, I honestly, like, I can't um, put a finger on why. Mm. I think I wanted to do a, a karaoke party when the tour ended for all of us. I would have loved to. The, so for anyone watching this, we were on the craziest tour because Claude and I were on tour together, but we were in separate bubbles. So we interacted in a very distant, strange and infrequent way. And it was fucking joy to be back on tour. But one of the most, one of the, like, like, you know, like not having people here or there, like all the other COVID parts of tour, I was like kind of into, but not being able to hang out with the people you're on tour with was the one that just absolutely fucking sucked. Yeah. Um, we would have just been sitting around all day talking shit. Mm hmm. That that was a bummer, but it was. I mean, we still hung a little bit. We did. Yeah. Did you feel isolated? No, because it was. I was still like seeing you guys every day. Yeah, it's uh, tough. It's it's tough with the mask. Like I really rely so much on like facial expressions and like all like the little things in between conversation, and yeah. just with the mask stuff backstage, I just feel like a lot of the conversations were just like. How are you? Like, mm -hmm. was the hotel nice? Yeah. <laughs> you feel well fed. Uh -huh. It's very broad strokes. Have you done laundry? Like yes. <laughs> are you currently experiencing happiness or depression? <laughs> <laughs> this is brutal. My mom, oh my God, I have to tell you this. My mom watched the TikTok of like me explaining the Ellen story. Yes. And is she upset? She, she was upset because she wanted to, me to tell you that it wasn't her who said that people would think I was gay for watching was it. I think it was like a friend of mine, but I was. I think, I, was, I think if we're going to get you on Ellen to tell the story, 
your mom's got to just like sit on that grenade. <laughs> she she can't bite that bullet. She, she might have to, or maybe that's the further. Well, it's interesting that you remember it that way. Yeah, I, I remember it that way, but she. But for anyone watching, Claude had to. Claude was cast in the, as dog catcher in Annie the school play, but had to drop out of the play because it conflicted with Claude's schedule of coming home to watch the Ellen DeGeneres show. It was there and at the same time. They were at the same time. And whether it was Claude's mother or another mother figure, someone in Claude's life was upset. So, yeah. They encouraged me not to, basically the whole middle school thought that I let, dropped out because I didn't like the part I was given. But I was encouraged not to let people know that I dropped out to watch Ellen because that was a very gay thing for me to do. <laughs> I understand whichever character in your life was the one who said, don't tell anyone because it seems gay. I understand why they want to be hidden right now. Yeah. But they're an important element to the story. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> my mom was like, everybody's going to think Can I'm homophobic. Um, I tell your mom I apologize. Um, He's fine. I've never gotten a homophobic feeling from her mm-hmm. in the times we met. That's why it's hilarious. Because That's why it's not- hilarious. Because she's clearly like not. And But I just think it's the best story. And I think it's... um. I mean, to me, the meat and potatoes of the story is honestly just the idea that you're struggling to decide whether to participate in the play or go home and watch Ellen. I know.